Hi, everyone. I wanted to come in and say hello, as I love to do, and I love to kind of meet all of you and say hi, and I love to hear from you and love to hear your comments. So I am using this wonderful new microphone, which Cheryl sent to me, which you all saw from last week's video. And so let me know that if you can't hear me, um, but I'm going to continue as though all is well. Um, so today, I wanted to speak a little bit about the illusion of separation. Because uh, actually, there's two things I wanted to speak about, two completely different topics. Uh, a few people wrote to me and asked me, what are some of the really fun things that I love to do to uplift myself? So I'm going to touch on that later. I'm going to start with the slightly heavier topic, which was um, a post or a, a comment I noticed from somebody named James Allen on my Facebook page. And I, I read it and I thought, oh, this is really interesting. I never thought about that for myself. And so whenever there's something interesting that intrigues me, I tend to kind of look at it deeper. So James Allen's comment goes, I notice that you cater heavily to the political left, but I also watch your videos and see that your way of thinking and living is very conservative, which means right, the political right, I guess. And, and he says, I don't know how you can reconcile this so well internally, but I admire it and can learn a lot from your example. So when I read that and I thought, huh, that's interesting because I've never thought about whether I'm left or right. I kind of think I'm just me. And to be honest, I don't identify with either side because to me, um, both sides are actually an illusion. When I take on the view, uh, the, what I call the death view or the near-death experience view or the view from the other realm, all of this separation is a total illusion. We are all just beautiful spirits, souls, and when we cross over, none of that division exists. So uh, even right now, um, you know, I noticed that one of the biggest problems that we're having in the world is that people are viewing others through, uh, especially in America, but it's probably happening everywhere in their own way. People view each other through a lens as to whether uh, whether the person is politically left or right or middle or, or whatever. But people are just people. And uh, we don't have to belong to any side. And one of the issues with identifying too strongly with any party, no matter what, and this isn't just about politics, it's about race, religion, anything. It's identifying too strongly. What happens is that we filter out that which doesn't um, that which doesn't agree with our thinking, but it's gone a step further than just filtering people out. What we're seeing happening in the world, and this is not you, uh, James Allen. You're probably not doing it because your comment was actually very said very respectfully and lovingly. But I'm just making an observation of one of the issues in the world right now is the divisiveness and the need to make people wrong who don't think the way they do. And to me, that is actually currently the biggest issue that we are facing as a race, um, as a, yeah, literally as a, as a race, as a species, because our need to make anybody that doesn't think like us or agree with us uh, the need to make them wrong, the need to shame them, the need to attack them, the need to wish ill on them, whoever it is, whatever side you're on, that is actually what is um, probably going to take us to the brink of our extinction. Multiple views can exist simultaneously. And to me, what's important and what I realized is the most important thing when I was on the other side are things like, are you authentic? Are you kind? Um, do you love life? Do you have a passion for living? Do you love other people? Are there people you love and people who love you? Do you, um, do you find joy in your life? Are you at peace? Are you at peace with yourself? All these things are so much more important than somebody's political views. 
And the minute you don't talk about politics or religion or these, these kinds of things, here's what you'll discover. You'll discover that we're all more alike than we are different. We all feel hurt the same way. We all bleed the same blood, color blood. Um, we, all, we are all affected by the same things. We all want the same things. That's, that might be hard to believe, but we do all want the same things. We all want for ourselves and our family, we want safety. We want food on the table. We want to feel secure. Um, we, we want, you know, we, we want abundance and we want our families to do well and we want our children to thrive. We all pretty much want the same thing. Um, so sometimes it's really sad to see how so many people fall apart. They fall apart in this three-dimensional um, quagmire that we have created. I don't know another word for that or this three-dimensional pool or, or a swamp that we've kind of created of just making people wrong and shaming each other. When I was a child, um, when I was about six years old, my parents enrolled me into a Catholic school, not realizing or not that they thought it was it would be really good for me because it was a strict school and they wanted me to have a nice, a kind of a strict, a disciplined, shall we say, a disciplined upbringing. Um, my parents, though, are Hindus, and so they were teaching me uh, the Hindu way, way of life of reincarnation and nirvana, and, and in Hinduism you have multiple gods, there isn't just one god. But in Catholic school, we learned that there is only one god, and everything else are false gods. And so I was learning things that completely contradicted what I was learning at home. and so. Uh, while, so when my Catholic peers would go to church on Sunday, I was being taken to a Hindu temple on Mondays, uh, Monday evenings. That was when we went to the temple. Um, I was learning things like uh, things like cows are sacred, you don't eat beef, and, and very, very different cultural values. In my little six-year-old mind, I had to reconcile it because I didn't want anybody to be wrong. I didn't want my... My, my schoolmates and my teachers to be made wrong, and I didn't want my parents to be made wrong. And so I struggled with that. And then I lived in uh, Hong Kong, which is predominantly a Chinese city, where most of the local inhabitants are, um, are Chinese. They're either Taoists or Buddhists. And so I had to reconcile that as well. So I took in all these cultures, and I realized that different people just have different views but we all have to learn to get along. Um, I think that has, that's what's actually helped me to just allow me to pick and choose what works for me and be who I am. But, and I'll be honest, until I had my near-death experience, I struggled. I struggled with figuring out what was right and what was wrong because the cultures I was brought up in was so diverse. The near-death experience helped me to realize that all these delineations is an illusion. When we cross over, we are all connected. And we all start to feel, oh my gosh, if only I'd known that. Oh, why did I make them so wrong? Oh, actually, the bigger problem, and you know, this is what we realize when we die, that the bigger problem is the divisiveness, not what is actually being shared, but the hatred and the divisiveness. That's actually what we need to heal. So my driving force in everything I do isn't about being left or right or in the middle or being Hindu or Jewish or, or, or Muslim or Christian. I don't care about any of those. I don't care who you are, what you are. What drives me is bringing people together. It's about making people see that we're all more alike than different. It's about making people realize that without our physical bodies, we are a soul. You are a soul. Your soul is pure love. Let that love shine through. And forget about the delineations. Forget about left and right and opinions and vaccinated or not vaccinated or wearing a mask or not wearing a mask or what people feel about that. Put those aside. Just put them aside if you truly want to feel connected with people. And Another key thing is communication. 
listen. Listen to why people feel the way they do. Listen to them. Well, another thing that drives me is that when I feel, when I see and hear people feeling fear, I don't care if, what their views are. I don't care if they're feeling fear because of their religion or because of their political stance or because they fear the opposite political stance. Whatever it is, the minute I sense someone is in fear, I tend to jump in and do what I can to alleviate the fear because it doesn't exist on the other side. See if you can do that too. The minute you feel fear, realize that fear is being caused because you are believing too strongly in what the opposition is saying and you're entrenched in it. And, and I know that there are people out there who say, but it's real. The people in the opposition are really going to do this. So of course I feel fear. But here's the thing, if you want to change it, if you really want to change it, I believe we can change it from the inside out. I believe that we can actually heal the world and heal other people through actually uplifting our own energy, through actually visualizing, through sending energy. We are energetic beings. We can expand our own energy. We can heal first ourselves, and it starts by relieving the fear. It starts by re realizing I am not a victim. I came into this body, into this life for a purpose. What is my purpose and let me fulfill it? I might be being challenged right now. I might feel fear right now because maybe something's pushing my buttons. Maybe I'm being challenged right now. But the thing is, it's an opportunity as well. Your soul didn't choose this journey lightly. It really didn't. I know my soul didn't choose it lightly. My soul chose it. And I came back and I know that my purpose is to alleviate the fear and make you realize that underneath we are all pure souls. Find your love, communicate, 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 communicate. The more diverse the view, the more you don't agree with someone, the more it means you need to listen, listen. Why are they so afraid? Why are they expressing what they're expressing? Why are they so opposed to what's happening? Just listen, and then ask them to listen as you express your views, because they're a soul and you're a soul. Um, I hope that was helpful, and now I wanna dive in. On that note, let's dive into something lighter. Also, if you have a question, please go ahead and post it, and I will ask Abby to pause me and she can ask the question. And there's a leaf blower just outside my yard. Um, and uh, someone with a leaf blower. And so there's these little things flying around here. Um, so, and I will repeat the question because this mic is so good that you probably can't hear the leaf blower and you won't even hear Abby. So I will repeat her question. Anyway, but the other fun question that I've had from before is what are the fun things that I really like to do what are the fun things that I love to do that really uplift me and make me laugh? Oh, there are so many fun things. One of them is I'm a foodie. I love food. Danny and I both love food. So during COVID, we both took it upon ourselves to hone our cooking skills. We started to actually, we started to actually uh, buy fresh ingredients and we cooked things from scratch and we had so much fun doing it. We love being in the kitchen together um, and he does most of the, the chopping and I do all the flavoring and I love making curries and things like that. And we played a lot with food. Like what I started to do, and one of the things is because I love food and I love flavors, um, I have to be careful because I have a tendency to gain weight. So what we started to do is we started replacing things like Ooh, rice with cauliflower. Like, yeah. Hey, do you know uh, the number for the pizza place? I just want to get a pizza. Um, by the way, guess what? What? You're on my Facebook Live. Turn and face the audience and say hello. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> I'll come and talk to you later. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. And yes, I have the number of the pizza place. Yeah. I'm just telling them about how we love to cook. Yes. And you're on the phone ordering pizza. Yes, yeah, it's a gluten-free pizza <laughs> with artichoke. Uh-oh. And... I doubt it somehow. 
uh, 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 artichoke. He claims it's a gluten-free pizza. It's, 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 with art I doubt it. I know your pizzas. It's, it's artichoke and... Yeah, I can't hear myself think. I'll, I'll, <laughs> bye. <laughs> so much for cooking. But yes, Danny and his pizzas. And so we, we started to replace... As I was saying, we started to replace rice with rice cauliflower. We started to replace pasta with, with zucchini pasta and things like that. Except, of course, Danny still has his pizzas. Um, the other thing that I love to do is I love to watch funny videos. And some of my favorites that I watch online um, and I'm not talking about binge watching on Netflix or something. I love doing that too. But the most funnest thing that I, I find, I mean, in terms of watching, are short videos on YouTube. And some of my favorites is, uh, you see, because I love food and cooking, some of my favorites is, is when food is combined with humor. And because also of my Hong Kong background, having grown up in Hong Kong and speaking Chinese, one of my favorite YouTube uh, artists at the moment is a guy called Nigel Ng. That's N-I-G-E-L, last name Ng, N-G. And he does these videos that is called, uh, he calls them Uncle Roger. And he's on this quest to find the best egg fried rice. But he is so hilarious because he does it all in this Cantonese, this Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese accent. So you have to have the Hong Kong thing to really appreciate it. But, but if you are somebody who's familiar with accents and all, he is hilarious because he opens his videos saying, saying uh, hello, niece and nephew. Today, I talk to you about the egg fly life. And he has me in stitches just laughing. And, and also on the show, he will roast people like, uh, in other words, criticize people, celebrity chefs like Gordon Ramsay and uh, Jamie Oliver and Nigella Lawson. And it's so funny because he's, he comes across as just being this, this ordinary uncle guy who just eats egg fried rice while criticizing all these amazing famous chefs. Anyway, but I love his videos. Another one I love is a guy named Ryan George who does these hilarious skits, um, very short skits. He has me laughing. Another person I love is an Instagram star named Celeste Barber. I'm sure many of you have already heard of her, but she is just so funny. She kind of makes, it, makes things real. She takes little video clips or pictures made by um, models who are super skinny, cover of Cosmopolitan magazine type models, super beautiful models and then just portrays doing what they're doing or wearing what they're wearing as a regular person with a regular body. And I just love her for doing that because her little skits are hilarious. That's what I do to uplift myself. And if you're feeling down and if you're feeling angry or anything like that, or you're feeling down about what's going on in the world around you, these videos, these skits will just lift you up. They lift me up in, in, in 10 minutes. It just changes my mood. And when I am uplifted, I'm able to do the work I do to uplift the rest of the world. I tend not to get, I tend not to get drawn into or sucked into anything that actually depletes my energy. And I'll be honest with you, conversations, whether it's about COVID or politics or anything, those conversations in and of themselves don't deplete my energy, but it's the divisiveness and fear that is rippled out of them that I can feel as an empath that is what depletes my energy, which is why I'm constantly driven to make videos and things to uplift people, which is also why I tell people, if, you, if, if my videos don't resonate with you, Please don't give your power to me. Um, but having said that, uh, I, uh, there are other things I do to uplift myself, which is also I love going out with my friends. I love laughing with people. Um, I love going out to meals with people. I'm so happy the restaurants have opened up here. And, um, and I love trying out new restaurants. All these things may make me happy. Comedy, food, music, all of these things, nature, friends, love laughter. And all of these are accessible and available for free for all of you. Um, 
and do we have any comments? Or, or Abby's trying to read a question right now. I'm aware you probably can't hear her. And I'm sure people will have noticed Danny's t shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wow. Okay, it is really hard. I experienced the same. Okay, wait, wait. I have to repeat the question. So somebody has written that she's had an NDE, and um, when she expresses what she experienced, she's finding that people are not receptive to what she's saying, and she feels stupid after expressing it. Do I have a tip for her? Um, I want to say I relate to you completely. And I felt the same way. And I have often shared, and if you listen to some of my earlier videos, you will hear me say in the videos that, that because I was getting so much pushback from debunkers and skeptics who said, oh, you don't, it, like, it, it's impossible for you to experience the death realm. That doesn't happen. That was your dying brain. The brain releases chemicals when it's dying. And so those were, that was just an illusion that you saw and so on. So I had people debunk me all the time, so I stopped sharing until Wayne Dyer discovered my story. My tip to you is to choose your audience. So what happened is Wayne Dyer exposed me to a whole other audience. But what I realized was that there literally are two audiences for this kind of stuff that we talk about. There literally are two different audiences that it's almost like they don't even overlap. One audience is very much steeped, and I spoke about this, I think, last week, so please check out my recent videos. But one audience is steeped in, in desiring five sensory, three-dimensional proof for everything. They do not believe that we are more than five sensory, three-dimensional beings. The other audience is aware that we are more than five sensory beings, that we are a soul, that we, have, that we are intuitive, that there is so much more to us. But because we live in a world that is created by people who believe that we are only five sensory beings, I mean, we live in a reality that is kind of run by people, and it's created for people, a society that's cre we live in a society that's created for people who only believe in five sensory reality and three dimensional reality, you know, our, our education system and all of that conditions us to believe we're only five sensory people. Um, so those who know there's something more, who have experienced something more, are hungry for this information. So what I have to tell you is that when you find the right audience, you will find that they are hungry for this information. They will want to know more. My suggestion is you join one of my Facebook groups. I have two Facebook groups. One is called From Healing to Whole. The other one is called Anita Morjani Author Discussion Group. Join one of those groups, and people will be very interested in hearing about your NDE. Join other groups like that, where people will be very interested in hearing about it. Join IANDS, I-A-N-D-S, International Association for Near-Death Studies. Join um, NDERF, uh, Near-Death Experience Research Foundation. You will find an audience that would love to hear more. They're hungry for it. And once you find that audience, I would suggest you focus on that audience and don't even worry about the skeptics. Do not focus on trying to win the skeptics. They will come when they're ready, but if they're not ready, don't change your message or your focus to try and win them. That would be my tip for you. So thank you for that question. So the question is, there's someone who feels that whenever they get too much attention, 
they become self-conscious and start judging themselves, right? And they start judging themselves. And so they would like to know how can they um, stop judging themselves and allow themselves to accept this attention. So my guess is that you are someone who has trouble receiving. You're someone who gives and gives of yourself, but you have trouble receiving. Um, I have done a whole video on this about receiving um, much earlier on. And, uh, and, and, but uh, let me just give you a quick tip now, but I would suggest you look back. I think the word receiving is in the title. But if you learn to receive, if you give yourself something every day, just give yourself attention every day, you will get better and better at receiving. The reason why, like say, I'm guessing that because you have trouble receiving, that you, you often feel depleted. Your energy is probably run down pretty often. The reason why that happens is because you're very good at giving, but you don't receive. So I would suggest you start learning by taking baby steps and give yourself a gift every day. And that gift could be the gift of time. Give yourself five minutes to unwind, increase it to 10 minutes the next day, and keep increasing it till you're able to soak in a tub for an hour or sit at the beach for an hour and continue to do it for no reason at all other than to nourish yourself. I suspect you're somebody who when you do something for yourself, you need to justify that there is a reason for it. You need to justify that you're helping someone else. Or you need to justify it because maybe your own body is not feeling so great, and that's why you're doing it. You don't need a reason. It's better to be able to receive with no reason so that your body doesn't have to, doesn't have to manifest some illness or discomfort to give you a reason. So just. Be, become comfortable with receiving and allowing yourself to receive gifts from the universe, gifts of health and abundance um, and so on. Um, and uh, I keep seeing a shadow of a big butterfly, so there must be a big butterfly fluttering around, which is uh, probably not appearing on the video, but I know, oh, there it is. It's a monarch butterfly. It's a big, and that's my sign from Wayne Dyer, by the way. I knew it from the shadow. It was a huge orange monarch butterfly flying around us while we're creating this video, which is uh, definitely a sign from Wayne Dyer <laughs> because he was really into monarch butterflies and he really believed that monarch butterflies were messages from the other side. So um, I want to thank you all for tuning in and you will get a lot more tips um, from my past videos from my Facebook page, from my sanctuary, which I will be opening up to new membership in about two weeks' time. So stay tuned for that. Um, you will also uh, get more tips on everything I spoke about in my, um, uh, my book, Sensitive is the New Strong. And what I'm also super excited about right now is the fact that I will be doing a, a live event in Sedona at the end of the year. And I would love for you to join me because we are going to be focused on uplifting our energies individually so that it can help to heal us, ourselves, um, and, it, and, and also so that we can also help to heal and uplift the people around us. And only when we allow ourselves to receive healing ourselves and receive empowerment ourselves and and to allow ourselves to fully embrace our own magnificence, can we start to see the world healed? Because the world is made up of individual people. And if each individual person took the responsibility to heal themselves, we would have a healed planet. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Bye.